is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. All right, there he is. How you doing, Ira? How you feeling? Back from Detroit. Nice quick flight this morning. Early game last night. And um, still really trying to figure if the Heat actually won that game last night, considering what they had to do to beat the worst team in the NBA. Yeah, they, they uh, I mean, I, I got nervous when them when they had the lead. Hell, they had even a double-digit lead and everything. That was kind of disturbing. And, and they were able to just do enough to you know, pull away at the end and, and get the victory. It's Ira, you know, I said this last week, I said, cause you know, we were kind of giving up on the heat and giving up on the Panthers all year, the way they've played. And I said it last week, I think the Panthers now are finally healthy and they actually look like a different team. The heat, they look like the same team we've been seeing all year long. I, I don't think, I think they are who we think they are. The Panthers may not be the team we thought they were this year, you know, throughout the year with, with, the, with the coach. I'm seeing better play out of that team now that they're healthy, Duclair and everybody's back, and Bob's actually playing well. With the Heat, it's the same old, same old, man. You, you don't, it, it's a jack-in-the-box. You just don't know what the hell you're going to get. Well, you know what? They're getting the, they're getting the wins. They've won six of eight. They, 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 it's how they're getting the wins, one that's concerning. But they've also had a softer part of the schedule and didn't right. maximize that. The loss to Orlando, games that they should have won. So you know what? N only two games this week. Knicks on Wednesday, Brooklyn on Saturday. We'll have a read big O by Sunday, whether there is something tangible here. That Knicks game, we know what happened to them last time the Knicks were here when Julius Randle shot the ball from his hips, put the three-pointer in, desperation game in which Brunson missed the second half. So the Heat need to make a statement Wednesday for another reason. A week after, they go to New York and they play the Knicks on Wednesday. They have to show confidence. Then the game against Brooklyn is probably the last chance corral for the Heat to make a run at the number six seed and avoid the play-in. They've already, they're already down 2-0 to the Nets in the season series, but they're only one game behind in the standings. The Nets have two games against Cleveland coming up before they play the Heat. So the Heat can make a statement there. If the Heat are anywhere where they thought they would be or who they thought they would be. This is the week. By the time I talk to you next Monday in our Accurate Pembroke Pines report, you might be saying, hey, Ira, you know what? The Heat finally made a stand. That's what we've seen about the, against the, with the Panthers. That Saturday game against the Devils, they could have capitulated when they were down 2 nothing. Instead, they showed fortitude and resolve. You know what, Big O? It's now time for the Miami Heat to show fortitude and resolve. Yeah, the, the only thing is, do they have what it takes to show the fortitude and resolve, whereas the Panthers have it. They have the players that you need. I'm not sure if the Heat have what they need, unfortunately, because we've watched it throughout the year. This is not the, the kind of team that fits today's NBA. There's just too many two-point shooters on this team. I know they scored 130 something points the other night and all that, and they've been scoring a little better as of the last couple games, but it's what they've been. They're like a streaky team. They're inconsistent. I'm not exactly sure they have the pieces to be that, that we're asking them to. Well, do. I mean, you look at the Panthers and you say, okay, okay, they have Barkov and they have Kachuk and the Heat. Okay. They have Jimmy Butler and they have Bam Adebayo. It's the wild cards after that. And I'll give you the example. Bobrovsky, at, at several points this season, Big O was not very good. His yeah. save percentage was not very good. Now he's come around a little bit. There is no Verhage on the well, Miami Heat. What I'm saying, but there is. I'm, no. My analogy I'm making with Bob is this. He was erratic. Tyler ha Hero, erratic player. Hell, erratic in the game itself on Sunday. Yeah, you but know, I, that, that's, true different. that's true. I, I would compare Verhage with, with Tyler, and it's not even close. Well, I, 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 I would I would respectfully disagree based on what Tyler has done in fourth quarters, because you know what? When games are on the line, he has the NBA's best plus minus in clutch minutes this season. The problem is the game is four quarters. You need something earlier so you don't get to those clutch minutes, which I understand. I believe the Heat have the requisite talent. It's just not been playing to that level. And probably our wild card is, and you saw it yesterday, Big O, in the, in the fourth quarter. Kyle Lowry played all 12 fourth quarter minutes. Really orchestrated at the end. Now, he's turning 37 on Saturday. 
He's old in NBA years and any years. Yeah. But if he can give them some of that after taking that month off in February, there's still hope. Again, you and I can say what the Heat are or aren't. Let's let it play out. Play out against the Knicks. Play out against the Nets. We'll have our answer before the Heat head to Toronto next week. How are they health-wise? Everyone is there. Kevin Love, I mean, literally looked like uh, he was a pro wrestler. You know how it is, yeah, Big O. He, that does a hell of a shot, dude. When you're Man. sweating and you start bleeding, it's like those wrestlers, you know, who cut themselves when they're sweating. It was all over the place there. You know, yeah. he went in the locker room. He was fine. He was able to come out for the second half. If they needed him, he would have played. Texted his wife back home here that he was okay. He's a tough kid. He's a tough guy. He took the moment, but he was able to come back, so he's good to go. Cody Zeller had his nose surgery. I think he's good to go. And what you're seeing right now, Big O, and you and I have spoken about this on our Acura Pembroke Pines reports, who is trusted and who's not trusted? And I mentioned this in my blog today, my Winderman's View. Omar Yurtsevin, not trusted. Played like three minutes in the beginning. That was it. They are playing Haywood Highsmith ahead of him. Asked and answered there. Victor Oladipo, not trusted. Has sat out two of the last three games. When Kyle Lowry wasn't available, that's when he played. Yeah, you can't ride the you can't ride the the big old coaster anymore. You have to be consistent to the finish net line. So we're starting to see Duncan Robinson fell out of the rotation, nowhere to be seen, even when they're struggling. If nothing else, by the end of the season, we see who Coach Spo trusts. He trusts Caleb Martin. He trusts Tyler here in fourth quarters. He embraces Kyle Lowry's return in those minutes. Gabe Vincent again a little shaky. Max Struess, nothing in the fourth quarter. Barely made, made a difference in the late and fourth quarters in recent games. If nothing else, at least at the end of the season, we know who's in and we know who's out. Yeah, no, you're, you're right about that. And um, with uh, with Lowry, I actually hit a big three, too. Four-point uh, play. He made a four-point play in the fourth quarter yeah. there. He could step in and make big shots. He actually defended very well. But again, it was against the Detroit Pistons B no, I know. Team. It's a terrible team. It's a yeah. terrible team. Now, yeah. Not only was it the Pistons with their bad record, but their best players weren't playing. Kate Cunningham, Bogdanovich. Right. So it, it was it was basically the Pistons G League team that the Heat struggled. We have to have perspective. That's why, you know what? The Heat could lose these next four games. New York on Wednesday. Uh, Brooklyn you, you, on Saturday. You, you, keep pu you keep pushing, you know, the... Well, we'll see, and we'll see, and we'll yep. see. And it's like, and and we, we and already saw, bro. And so does yeah. also. What did Eric Spolster do when he walked in that media room at Little Caesars Arena yesterday? He told us, forget about everything to this point. We still have time. Big O. Uh, yeah, but that, 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 that's Spolster. That's Spol yes. talk, man. Look, God bless him. Look, he he is the real gem right now in that in that organization. In my Absolutely. eyes, okay, the front office for me and the ownership, or you know, they they got to straighten their stuff out and and figure it out. I felt horrible for him because I believe it was this press conference, not the Bulls one, where he said to you guys, you know, I told my guys this is going to be hard, and I've embraced how hard this is going to be right. or the challenge of all of this, and and to me that's. You know, that's my problem with what's gone on with Spo. The poor guy, you're you're giving him a whole bunch of incomplete things, and he's got to try to make, you know, a beautiful meal out of this every single time, and he does the best he possibly can all the damn time. And I just wish that this organization went back to acquiring stars and not trying to unearth the 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 hidden gem from well, somewhere that nobody thought they had a star in Kyle Lowry. But they got an overage star. Yeah, that I was that was never a star. I don't. But they gave him Jimmy Butler, and they give. They, look, they gave Spo the big Butler, three. No, Butler. Butler's yeah. fine, but right. you had to go get that other star, and that was never Lowry. I I don't know why they would think it was a star because I'm an idiot compared to Pat Riley and 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 right. Chet and all those other people that know way more basketball than I ever will. And I knew Lowry was not a star at this point. Why would you bring him here? I, I don't get that part. I, I I need to get back to acquiring, you know, the Posies and the Ray Allens and the and the Battiers, you know. Get back to acquiring these kind of And they had that kind of run. And Big O, I think you'd even agree the Drogic acquisition was a gutsy, gritty player yeah. who helped push that team deep yeah. in the playoffs. Yeah. So they had the run with Goron, they had the run with Jimmy. The Kyle thing set them a little bit sideways, and now Eric Spolster is absolutely having to mix and match. So look, he told us midseason in January, our time's still coming. 
He told us at the at the All Star break, our time's still coming. He told us at the March one buyout deadline, our time's still coming. Big O. There's and I know he's saying, and he's left. saying that they're playing better too, and all right. that other stuff. Yes. And I know nine he pulled this shit a couple of years ago on us, where he said, "No, no, no on the thirty-one and ten, no, they're playing better. You'll see." And then all of a sudden, they started to play better and all that. And I get that he has this foresight about him that we don't see sometimes what he sees, but I, I don't know. I just, I almost feel like his words after a game or his message to you guys or whatever, it's just kind of trying to keep feeding the monster and trying to keep it. Keep hope and, alive. Yeah. Trying keep, to keep hope alive. alive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's going to so go when into that. Down last... inside, he kind of knows what we most know he's about. He's going to go into that last game, April 9th and going, Oh, if we beat the magic today, we'll still have a chance. If teams X, Y, and Z lose later in the day, that's, that's what him. this season's about. They keep pushing the bar out there until you know what? All of a sudden, the bar's rolling in the street. The season's over, and you're going, "Yeah, we never quite got there." Right, right. That's uh, that's kind of what I, kind of what I fear that's going to end up happening. Uh, we'll see what ends. We'll, we'll see how it goes. All right. So health wise, they're they're not too bad. It looks like they're going to have uh, their guys going into it. Um, you like the way it, 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 what you're seeing now? You just kind of touched on it a little bit with the Oladipo stuff and with Duncan and all that. Is he kind of getting to the point where he's saying, well, these are the guys I'm going to go into the playoffs if, you know, if we're in the playoffs and all that good stuff. Uh, these are the guys we're going in with. Is this, is he getting to his playoff rotation now? Are we in that point of the season? There's a couple of things that might change, but he's filtered out a lot of the silt already. We don't know when or if Kyle Lowry goes back in the starting lineup. Gabe Vincent's been very uneven lately, big O. Yeah. But we also don't know, does Kyle Lowry have 30 minutes a night in him? Yesterday was fascinating. Kyle Lowry played 23 minutes, 12 of them in the fourth quarter. So do you save him for late and use a part-time starter? The other one is this Kevin Love thing. Spo so wants to try to make it work. And he just got here on, on February 20th. But might there be a point where he goes, you know what? Our best lineup all season was the one where Kyle was starting and Caleb was starting. And does he go back to that? That was their best lineup by the numbers, Big O. They yeah, have a positive net rating there. Look, it's, not, the best, a, it's not Caleb's best numbers, but I get it. I get it. I it just it makes it's them better. The does, does, is that net rating as good as the Bucks? No. As good as the Celtics? No. As good as the Sixers? No. That's why they try to do something. You know what, Big O? Just like you talked about the Panthers and the move they made, but you're not going to tell me they're better than the Bruins because you know they're not. No, and I'm no, not going to sit here and tell you that he's better than the Celtics, better than the Sixers, better than the Bucks, and maybe not even better, sorry, than the Cavaliers or Knicks. You kind of realize after a while, that's what we do. We assess teams for a living. Right now, I think the Heat's ultimate battle cry after the season will be, we're number six, because I think that's their ultimate upside. All right, what are you working on so uh, folks can uh, check you out on the Sun Sentinel? Well, supposed to try to push the whole March Madness narrative as far as he can to keep that hope alive and keep pushing them. So he was effusive after the game yesterday in Detroit. So I asked the players about it. They said, yes, yeah, sort of. But the tournament, you lose one, you're done. That's the problem. Nothing is, is the major all winner go home game for the Heat. But I think these Knicks and the Brooklyn games coming up at home. Remember, they only have three home games left are as close as it comes to the Heat. So I think those are going to be really important games for the Heat this week to set up the remaining seven games of the season as I, again, sort of push that bar a little further out. So you have that going on. We're also talking about what Kyle Lowry's done, but mostly I wrote a story about Tyler Hero in the fourth quarter, and I love what Spo said. He said, now, for, whenever I write notes to, 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 to Tyler, I'm going to tell him it's the fourth quarter because he's such a different player. In the first three quarters, he takes those oh-my-God shots. In the fourth quarter, I mean, you got to give him credit. He is... Dion Waiters 2.0 to an extent. He can be 3 or 12, but my God, he has as much confidence in that 13th shot as anyone. It's what Spolster calls irrational confidence. Tyler got himself some of that. One more thing before I let you go around the NBA. John Morant, there's this story I read that the, that the Grizzlies now want to leave after games right away so Jaw doesn't go to strip clubs. I, I'm, I'm going to keep the strip clubs part out, but a lot of teams have gotten these sports science doctors in who have told them, if you have a day off after a game, go back to your hotel, get a good night's sleep. It's better for your body clock and fly the next day. Most teams have done that. 
But Big O, if your players are not going to go back and get a good night's sleep, you might as well drag them back home to Memphis or wherever you're going. So, yeah, that they realize they have a young, immature player, a young, immature team. If I'm one of the veterans on that team and I'm getting into a good sleep cycle because my sports scientist doctor tells me you're better off not leaving the city, it kind of screws you up. But that's what you do. You sort of play to your stars and you realize you got to keep the kid out of trouble. And he was in a crap ton of trouble. He's eligible to come back tonight against Dallas, but will not play. He's gearing up his competition. Competition level is conditioning level. But you know what? Memphis is right there in the top three in the West through all of this. So they've endured. Now we'll see who John ja Morant is when he comes back. And, and you know what? Now that you mentioned about being immature, it's not just Tim. It's you said immature team. We got Dylan going back and forth yeah. with Clay Thompson and all that crap. And the cameraman in Miami and some some poor contractor who's trying to make a living, who works game to game paychecks. And just to shove the guy, believe me, I would be shocked if there's not a civil lawsuit coming there as well. OK, so Memphis is probably one of those teams that the front office is going to say, yeah, we need to infuse a couple of veterans into this locker room. Right. That's probably yeah. what's going to that's probably what's going to happen. Not that. Not guys that necessarily have to take over in games or anything, but, you know, add a Udonis Haslam type to kind of police the locker Well, they, they have one. They have Steven Adams, but he's been injured for a couple of months now. He's a really good teammate. But, yeah, a lot but he's, of times, he's busy in commercials, holding people up and, you know. Hey, with that kind of man strength, I wouldn't get in his way, so he might not be the worst guy there. But Memphis has done that over the years also. But you know what? Hard market to get NBA veterans into. They also yeah. want to li live the life. The last guy who played in that market and endured probably was Nick Collison in Oklahoma City. You don't get a lot of grizzled NBA vests like Andre Iguodala, who refused to play in Memphis, if you remember, before he was traded for the Heat. Tough market, tough place to make a go of it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's tough. But they, they, it looks like they're going to have to add some kind of, you know, leadership to that mix. All right, follow follow him on Twitter at Ira Heatbeat and catch his exceptional work there at the South Florida Sun Sentinel. Ira, as always, thank you, my friend. We'll see you on Wednesday. Wednesday, redrecover.com Red inside the paint show. We'll have our hour-long Knicks pregame preview show. Looking forward to that with Kurt Heelan. Thanks, Big O. Thank you. Thank you, Ira. Appreciate you immensely. There you go. And don't forget, well, we got a lot loaded of cars, brand new certified pre-owned vehicles. They even got one of those NSXs in there, bro. That thing is beautiful. That red NSX they've got in the showroom and that uh, new beautiful TSX. Man, get your asses down to the ILX. I'm sorry. Get down there to 15601 Pines Boulevard, just off of I-75 in Pines. Check out the fleet of certified pre-owned vehicles and a service center led by Mike Chan and Jordan Ferber. They are the best in the business. That is Craig Zins, Acura of Pembroke Pines.